Hello and welcome to this video, beautiful friend. It's lovely to have you here. So today I'm going to talk about four more reasons why coming off social media was a brilliant idea for me and how it's serving me in my life and it's something you might want to consider. Let's get into it, shall we? So as of today, the 1st of December, happy December, where the noggin has the gear gone. Um, I am 76 days from deleting other social media apps from my phone and taking the time back for me. So in a previous video on it, I'll try and link it. Um, you'll see the main reasons, but over the time, I've noticed four more things that have kind of come into my awareness. Now, the first two were really only kind of um, apply to you if you're an artist or have a small business, you're an entrepreneur of some sort, you're a thinker outside of the box of some sort. The second two will definitely apply to you wherever you are, <laughs> whoever you are, and um, and one of them in particular surprised me. Okay, so number one, and it's a problem that so many small business solopreneurs fall into, and I fell into the trap big time, is that we're taught by coaches, etc., and you're always chasing that, that bit of wisdom, that bit of information, that podcast that's going to tell you how to run your business and you're going to be a runaway success right we're taught that you are your brand as a solopreneur your niche is you your usp unique selling point is you you're the reason people are buying those products even more than the products themselves etc especially if you're a service-based business obviously it's you now if we go and work for a small um, i don't know for a chain somewhere you work in a local supermarket you're paid an hourly rate for your hour of your time that your business is you model works well if you just see it as that your hour of your time but what so many of us fall into the trap of is it's an hour of you your soul <laughs> your your energy your everything it becomes all about you being for sale rather than your time and what i've come to realize is i am not for sale i am not for sale you couldn't pay me a high enough hourly rate <laughs> to buy the parts of my soul that I was just giving away left, right and centre and wondering why it wasn't sustainable on social media. It's a real big lesson, an important lesson, an awareness to have. Your boundaries are your business and you have to set yourself up in a way that is healthy and remember that you are not for sale. Because believe you me, the algorithm will take as much of you as you're willing to give. The algorithm will suck it up and feed it to the masses. So you have to be careful about what you're willing to give and what you're willing to share. Because you are for you. You're not for the whole world. Okay, so number two, and I might get in trouble with people for this because when I've voiced this opinion before, people don't really like it. Um, <laughs> I upset people. But I've got to tell it how it is for me and how my experience of life is. So for me, art is a really intimate and very personal experience and activity. It's me and my higher self, my higher being, source, God, creator, the muse, inspiration, divine guidance, whatever you want to call it. It's just, if there's two of us, it's us, <laughs> right? And we're in this zone and we're doing this thing. It's a real intimate, personal experience. As far as I'm concerned, and this isn't every artist's experience, obviously, but my what I'm doing is being a bridge between worlds. I'm bringing the unseen into the seen realms. It's a really important task. It's a really important job that artists do in the world. And it, it's it, I can't put enough weight on the importance of it. And it's a really intimate, personal experience that you bring to, because artists have a way of accessing the unseen realms, translating it into a way to make it into a 3D thing that other people in the world can receive and enjoy because they can't receive it the way we can receive it. So our job is to translate. We're translators. We're bridges between worlds, right? Now, social media would have it that this very intimate, very personal, very sacred connection no, I want you to film that. I want you to give it to 10,000. It, it would be like having a camera in the bedroom with me and my wife when we're committing personal things. Committing, that's not the right word. Do you know? It would be like having a camera on your other... When I'm having a poo, it's like having a camera in the bathroom. No, no, it's not acceptable. 
I'm not going to invite the world in when I'm in a really sacred and intimate space. And I know not all of art is like that. Sometimes I'm angry when I'm creating art because it's not working out how I want it to work out. I can't translate it to the level that I want to translate it, etc. Sometimes, yes, I'm just covering the canvas with a background wash. It, it's not that time of heightened awareness, but when it is, I'm buggered if I'm gonna put, <laughs> film a bit of it on Instagram and have to be careful about the angles I'm doing and what I'm how it's being seen etc because I need to make sure that I'm offering something that's going to be going to appease the masses or appeal to the algorithm etc it's an intimate process and it's not for the gaze of millions that's how it is for me it might be how it is for you what the noggin are we doing trying to film an intimate process like that it goes against all of human nature and, and spiritual nature i don't get it so that's number two okay number three i'm trying to keep this brief number three is my attention span it's phenomenal how i can now and i only just realized this about two weeks ago i was sitting down and i was like just bring yourself back to center um focus on something it's amazing how my attention span has grown, how I'm more able to be still, how I'm more able to pace myself, take my time. And it's not to say, obviously, you know, ADHD, hello, but it's not to say that I'm not a little bit like woo-woo or I have days when I'm, when I'm giddy and stuff like that. But generally, my attention span, my ability to see something through or stay focused on something and to want to stay focused on something has grown so much. It's insane. It's unfathomable that being off my phone, that quick moving, feed me, feed me, feed me, changing the view all the time for 76 days could result in the type of calm and stillness and attention span I have now. Um, highly recommended. If you only do it for that, then do it for that alone because it's worth it. Okay, so number four, and this will appeal to you, whoever you are, and you might not have thought of it, but it's been mind-blowing to me, and I'm very happy about it, is that I've changed my phone data plan, because I no longer need the gazillion of data, because I'm not going on my phone when I'm out of the house every five minutes. I'm not picking up my phone when I'm in the post office queue. I'm having a conversation with a lady, or I'm just looking at the beautiful scenery, etc. I'm I'm not just picking up my phone when I'm out and about, left, right and centre all the time. I don't need to. So I've cut my plan down. So instead of pet spending 40 odd pounds a month, I'm now on the SIM only plan for £11.50. Hello. <laughs> I was like, what the noggin? £30 a month I've saved. I've got all this time back, all these benefits, plus I've saved £30 a month. Hello. What do you reckon on that, mate? So if you're someone that's thinking about giving up social media, I highly recommend it. Absolutely highly recommend it. Little caveat thing before anybody points it out. I am still on social media, as in I still have all of my accounts up and running there. And I have posted about 10 times in the in my dry spell that's going to last indefinitely because I've had to schedule posts just to launch new products because I've got a small business. And at the moment, I'm still fathoming now how to get my products seen without actually being on social media myself. So if anybody's got any hints and tips around that, take back your life, your real life, your actual being in your human body, not viewing other people's lives life. Hello, I've just been editing the video that hopefully you've just watched and there's more I want to say, so I'm going to try and make it quick. But I'm really aware that there's so, so much on the internet. There's so much all the time. I personally don't want to be adding anything to it that isn't going to help somebody enhance someone's life, give someone relief or inspiration or grace or peace or um, any of those things that's going to help somebody. I certainly don't want to just be something that's just on output for the sake of being on output. Joined with that is what I've noticed is being really present in my life and not having to feel like I have to film everything or share everything. Um has made me really aware of people that do and made me question like where are the boundaries what is for you and why does your life have to be a show and it's really interesting 
particularly with neurodiverse people, I think there's something in this. We're so busy masking. Is it part of the masking story? They were presenting this front. We're doing a performance. Our lives have become an, a performance on social media rather than an, our actual lives. And we don't give ourselves time to know how we actually think and feel. That's a good enough reason to step back. <laughs> not, not be churning out or be consuming all the time, you know. So I think the answer is to live consciously, to choose your moments you spend on your phone consciously and don't do it as a kind of robotic habitual thing then you're going to be fine. Have a beautiful day.